folks, hang on to what you got, because today we're talking brand new knives for 2024 from Case. This is wild. So folks, I'm here today with the one and only Mari Ford. PC, good Mari, to see you, man. Good to see you, as always, and uh, been really excited. Exciting so we, we've been doing a bunch of videos today yes. um, with all the new products coming from Case. Uh, this one, I think, is probably the most new, yeah. if you would call it that. Um, I would absolutely say that. This, yeah. is, this is probably what I would consider the most outside of the box as far as what you'd expect from Case. Right. Now, a couple of years ago, you guys released the Marilla and the Kenzua. Yes. Um, but this is kind of a, you're, talk, you're calling it the bridge line. The bridge line, yes. And, and that's literally what it is. Exactly. When you, when you think about it in, in a metaphorical sense, because this kind of bridges the gap between what you know and love from Case and those new modern folders. And I gotta say, these things are absolutely gorgeous. So let's talk about First off, before we show them the mentality and, and what you guys were, were aiming right. for with this. So a, a lot of what we did, and you know, we've had, when we introduced the, the Marilla and the Kinzu, so they did great. You know, Ken, Marilla was the American-made knife of the year in yep. 21. Uh, we were excited about that. We are really, our artisans wanted to show that they could make a modern knife. Um, but from the very get-go of, of entering that modern space, we knew that we wanted to make a modern case knife as yeah. well. So, you know, we're going to continue down. We've got some great carbon fiber Marillas and Kinzus and Westlines and those sort of things. We're going to continue down that path. Uh, but the bridge line was something that we've worked on for about three years. And what we wanted was a kind of a modern slip joint, right? Yeah. We are, we are slip joint people. And uh, this was something that we said, you know, we can take a, we can modernize a slip joint of sorts. And looking at the market, you know, a lot of people, even early on when we introduced the Marilla and Kinsley, like, oh, that's great. That doesn't look as much like a case knife as I thought it would. <laughs> and and I think what you're going to find with these is that, okay, we, we, need, a, we need a bolster, right? We yeah. need a traditional case style blades. We need, we're going to use CPM 20 in these to, just for the edge retention, right? Yeah. We want a knife that's going to be modern but it's going to it's going to look traditional in yeah. sorts so we've used some some great materials we've tried to we've tried to bridge that with some premium materials and uh and I think without further ado you've got to well, got to jump in and there, right so I I think this one is the the first one we'll we'll get to the the other one here yes. in just a moment but this one is kind of the most familiar yes um yes. so it's going to be a double d tent or in this case really a triple d right. tent Right. Um, because it's more of a slip joint style, um, but with the detent locks, yes. and it's going to have a half stop there, and then open. So this is going to be more in line with a traditional case knife. Yes, um, and that's our high bank. So that's what we call the high banks. You're going to see that that modified Warncliffe type blade. You're going to see that that cut out kind of that that thumb notch is going to yeah. be just a cut out like we've done on the others. It's going to have the deep carry pocket clip. Uh, the aluminum bolsters, they're going to be, this knife is, is screwed together. You know, that's one of the, the big changes, yeah. I think, with a lot of the modern knives. Um, but this is going to have a lot of case characteristics in it. Yeah. You're going to see, again, the front bolster, you're going to see that, that pinch on the front bolster. Um, and it, it is going to be that kind of that detent slip joint. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't, well, slip joint, I guess it's hard to say that without a back spring, but uh, it's going to have that. You're also going to see that that slight fluting on the bolster. Uh, you're going to see that it's got a ball bearing uh, pivot, so you know it's going to be a very smooth, smooth functioning yeah. knife. Um, and and you know, being a detent, it's it's not a lock back, right. so it's not going to lock. Uh, but it gives you, it still gives you that very security. much that yeah. very much that security in that. So uh, we're going to have this knife, and both of them actually going to be available in three different handles. We're going to have this. OD green micarta. We're going to have a black burlap micarta, um, which probably maybe my favorite handle. Yeah, that's, um, that's, that's slick looking. Yeah, that, that looks really, really nice. And then we're going to have the rosewood. And this is the most traditional handle that we've got, right? Uh, so we wanted to start using some traditional handles. Uh, we expect to do some others, you know. We, yeah. Um, but we want to look at the things that would appeal to the person carrying this, you know, maybe this is the uh, the executive, or this could be a great outdoors knife too. But um, very much, and we look at the name, the high banks, uh, much like the Marilla, the Kinzu, the Westline. It's all relative to that McKean County, Bradford, mm -hmm. where we're made. Yep. Uh, really ties into the American made, but really to the community of 
of what it takes to make a case knife. Right. So um, it take it's taken me a while even to get my head around. Well, where are all these local names? I'm yeah. not, I'm not from Bradford. <laughs> uh, but when you look at it, it's very cool how it ties in, and it ties into things of significance. So whether it's the the Kinzu Bridge or the Kinzu uh, area. Um, you know, the Marilla is a, I think it's a creek that runs yeah. through there. So everything has a cool story. And well, and it gives great. kind of a foundation and, and I think it helps the customer with a sense of ownership because yeah. I mean, we talk to a lot of knife designers and when you can actually trace the design and the name back to something tangible, something yes. real, um, it, it means something and yes. it, it, uh, it gives it, uh, kind of a personality of its own. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree. So uh, it's going to be great. Now, this one is a little bit different. Yep. So, oh, look at there. Look at that. <laughs> that is just, that's slick. Yeah. And it feels really good. I mean, great action. Right. That's our longhouse. So that is a liner lock, but it is a front flipper. And for, uh, for those of us slip joint people, yeah. Uh, I, I tell when I hand one in, in our office or something and someone's like, I can't open it. I said, it's, it's almost like a rust lock. The yeah. first time you handle a rust lock, it just feels, it feels a little different. Awkward. But once you do the front flip action four or five times, it's like, man, this is, this is easy and great. Yeah. Uh, so I do, I really do love that front flipper. Uh, I love the fact that it is a liner lock. So you've got that extra safety feature in there. Um, a lot of the other characteristics are going to be much like, uh, the high banks. You're going to have that, um, that anodized aluminum bolster. You're going to have the, it's a screw together. You're going to have that deep carry pocket clip. Uh, this one has what we call like a, it's almost like a, a spear point clip blade. So yeah. it's a, it's a little bit different blade style design. Again, CPM 20. Um, you know, I've taken a lot of education on, you know, what's the difference S35, CPM 20, all these things. Uh, you know, all of them have different characteristics. They're all super great performance yeah. deals. I think one of the great things about CPM twenty is the uh, edge retention. So yeah. it's gonna it's gonna really hopefully hold that edge really well. Um, and this again will also be available in those three handles. So uh, our goal is to have to have a lot of these available in February. So yeah. we're going to we're going to launch this sucker at Shot Show. Uh, we're going to uh, you know work hard to make sure we can get some in the hands very quickly. And I think they're. Uh, you know, I think everybody's going to love it. Everybody's yeah. going to love it. I, I, I dig it. And so I think the next question everybody's going to have is price point wise. Where is this? Yeah, th these are going to fall in that, probably that 169 range. Okay. Somewhere like that. So uh, some 159, 169 are going to be kind of in those price ranges. You know, we really, really wanted to make sure that we could hit um, within that medium price range. You know, there are right. a lot of knives that are a lot more expensive. Uh, there are some knives that are less. I don't know that any of those are made in America. Right. But, um, yeah, so we, you know, we didn't, the premium steels, all the premium handle materials, uh, the ball bearings, the everything that we're doing to make sure that this knife is representative of the case name. Yeah. Uh, again, you're kind of blending that tradition and that modern uh, in a way that, uh, that hopefully really resonates with the case consumer. Cause, nice. You know, I, I shouldn't say, I don't know if you imagine Bradford's watching this, I always say, <laughs> you know. And a lot of people would probably say, oh, man, this is where Case should have started in that modern. And, right. And we always had this as a goal, but uh, getting here was, it, it took a little bit longer. And, but man, I am excited about these because I'm. Uh, I am too. These, you know, I think these are in a really great place. And it, uh, I think these are going to really speak to a traditional Case crowd. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Whereas, you know, maybe the more modern stuff right. um, didn't as much. Yes. Uh, so I, I really dig it, and I think that's really cool. Now, and this is probably way too early to tell and say, but uh, can we expect maybe different handle materials further in the future? Yes. Uh, end and, of the year, next and, and year? And maybe some even as we get deeper into that. Right. But but yes, I think, you know, one of the beauty of this is, is a lot of different handle options. Uh, the way these knives are made... You know, we get uh, we get a lot of customers uh, smoking my knife works being one of them. It's like, man, oh, you, you, I can't get enough trappers. What are you doing? You know, and and this is an area of our plant that we can we can scale right. There's a lot of technology in these yeah. knives. Um, oh, that's twice I've done. Don't cut yourself. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of technology in these knives, so it, it's assembled and and done differently. Yeah. So we're we're able to 
do some R&D on this side of the factory that doesn't impact our efficiency and right. our productivity on the other side. So um, for those case traditional loyalists, uh, don't worry. Don't worry. We're still making slip joints. That is our bread and butter. We're never going to change that. Um, but in the areas that we are and with the equipment, there's things that you can that you can use technology for. Yeah. You can't use it as much for a trapper. Right. Uh, you can use it for some of this. So we're able to do that and just super excited. They're all made in Bradford. They're all locally grown and, and they're going to be, uh, yeah, I think they're going to be really popular. But um, a, a trick for me, and you know, I told you I'm getting my, I'm getting my shot show pitch because everybody's like, I don't remember which one was which. Right. Uh, high banks, yep. H, half stop. That's how I remember it. Oh, I'm there like, we go. Yeah, I like I'm like, that. So we're like, I don't remember if it was the high banks or the longhouse I wanted. Well, I want the high banks that that is not a front flipper, or if you want the front flipper, then that would be that would be your longhouse. So, again, I just uh, it's a super knife. I really I love really that like it, shape. and it's got the uh, obviously it's going to have the stone wash finish. So you're going to have all that on there, uh, but you're going to have that OD green micarta. Micarta is great. You yeah, know, we, we've and done some things with it but, that that a lot of people are, are yes. really wanting. Yes, and you can always take that off if you yeah. if you didn't want it. You wanted this to be a traditional pocket knife. You could take that off, but it is great. You know, as a, as I carry a traditional knife and a Marilla, yeah, that deep carry pocket clip is so convenient, man. Yeah. When you need a knife, it just comes Absolutely. right out of there. Comes Absolutely. right out of there. So, uh, it, great, great stuff. Again, this will be available February. Yeah, February. That's awesome. Um, we were hoping to have some in January. There could be some at the very end. So. Okay. If they're on the front end of the ordering, once they see this video, they might get some quicker. But plan in February that you'll have you'll have good production of this. That's awesome. Mari, thank you so much, man. TC, thank Appreciate you, it. my man. All and right. Folks, as always, it's been me, TC, here with Smoky Mountain Knifeworks, smkw.com, along with Mari Ford. And remember, if it cuts in a case bridge line, then we carry it.